Hi, today I'm going to replace two damaged wheels on my 1931 Ford Model A with new wheels. You may have seen my earlier video where I got those new wheels powder coated. First I'll raise my Ford Model A with my new floor jack. Then I'll put jack stands on the front and rear axles, remove the wheels, take them down to Les Schwab to have them transfer the new tires to the new wheels. So let's get started. First I remove the old spare tire with rusted wheel. I'm going to replace it with the left front wheel that has a new tire on it. From what I've found online, it's not recommended to use a floor jack in the middle of the axle. It could actually bend it if it's done improperly. So to avoid this, I'm going to lift each side one at a time to put on the floor jack. Actually, I'm only going to lift the left side because I'm just replacing the left wheel. I'm going to lift the rear end of the Model A right at the differential. Once I get it up high enough, I'll slide these jack stands underneath each end of the axle. I want to make sure I don't place all the weight on the oil drain plug. I've got the front wheels blocked. Looking good. I want to climb under this. Good. Slowly let her down. Looking good. Yep, plenty of clearance for the tire. The technician at Les Schwab's, when he was changing my tires, used two floor jacks, one on each side of the front axle. I don't have two floor jacks, so I'm going to do one at a time and slide in the jack stand. It's the first time doing this, so. <laughs> See if that worked. Whoa. Now I'm going to remove this left rear tire with the bent spoke wheel so it can be replaced with the new wheel. Two by four in here to make it easier to prevent from spinning. See if I can do it with this ratchet. It's kind of hard. Need to use this baby. Oh yeah. Much easier to do. Need the extension so I don't ding up the new wheel once I get it installed, the new tire. Got her done. I won't have to use these little washers anymore because the new wheel isn't all flared out. Next, I'll remove the left front tire, which I'm going to use as a spare tire. I need to uh, jam this wheel so it doesn't spin. Works good. I think it might be over torqued. This wheel is still pretty good condition, so it'll be fine as a spare tire. Someday I might have it powder coated, so it's as shiny as the new ones. Take off that hubcap and we'll go to Les Schwab. Here we go. Now I'm going to install the left front tire as the spare tire. The tire is new, the wheel's old, but it's in good condition. First, I'm gonna replace the hubcap. So at least on this side, everything looks shiny. So I discovered when taking the spare tire off, it was a bit of a struggle. First, I had to deflate the tire as much as possible, of course, the inner tube, and then I had to figure out how to remove it from this plate. Fortunately, there's some movement here, but when the tire's jammed in here and tight, it's difficult to get an angle to pull the tire off. 
What I found was best to do is to remove this cotter pin and then undo this nut, or at least loosen it. This time I'm just gonna loosen it to see if I can get it in. Let's give that a shot. I'll get this old hub cap off. There we go. Bend a few tabs back, see how much larger those are than the old. Don't need to bend them all back. Maybe four of them. This is a spare after all. There we go. All right. Now I need to let some out of the inner tube so I can uh, push it into that slot very tight. You can pump it up once it's in there, but you can't get it out. Go figure. I loosened this nut as far as it will go. It'll give me the most flexibility of that mounting plate. Let's see if I can get it in there. Oh yeah. That helps a lot. So it looks good. It might do it. This is a bear. Looks like I lined up the plate. But I gotta get that nut tightened and the cotter pin back in there so it won't come off. Just don't want it rattling. Oh, that's good. I still got it in the bottom holes. So now the trick, find the cotter pin hole need the help of a flashlight I think. Using a flashlight I was able to insert the cotter pin. I just need to bend it. In hindsight I should have inserted it before I put the tire in place. I should do the trick. There we go. There we go. It's in. I'm going to remove this old hubcap before I take the wheel and tire into Les Schwab. It looks like there's an excessive amount of grease in here. Maybe that was me when I lubricated it. A lot of noisy airplanes today. Sorry about that. It's squim and it's spring, almost summer. I gotta bend those little tabs. Oh, that was easy. The old hubcaps have very small very short tabs, and they're pretty much bent over and compromised. This is why I'm replacing them with new hubcaps. So there's only three mounting lugs here and two cosmetic lugs. Don't need it that secure for a spare tire. And I think I'll be able to inflate the tire a little bit to keep it tight. Use these little expansion washers that are needed after years of wear and tear that it opens up that hole a little bit too wide for the lug nut. Make it look pretty. Well, at least with no gaping hole. No torque requirements here. They get snug so it won't fall off. <laughs> okay, put a little air in there and that should be nice and tight. I loaded up the two new wheels, the two old tires, and the new tire and inner tubes in the back of my pickup. And I brought them here to the Les Schwab Tire Center to mount them up put post-its on them to identify what they need to do with these things. And there is quite a few instructions. I want to make sure that they get it right. Tires and wheels are ready to go here at Les Schwab. We're going to go to the park and walk Sky, and they'll give us a call when it's done. Tires are all done at Les Schwab. 
I can't wait to put it back on the Model A. They're beautiful looking. Thanks for all your help. Absolutely. Now I'm all set up to install these two new wheels with new tires on the Model A. But first I'm gonna install the new hubcaps. So there are 10 tabs on this new hubcap, much longer than the originals. What I'm gonna do is bend them up about 90 degrees, every other one I think will be good enough, so I can insert them into the opening on the wheel. That should do it. To protect this nice powder hooding from getting scratched up and from scratching the hubcap, I'm setting the tire on these two two by twos and I'm putting a sponge underneath and that will kind of press the hubcap in place while I bend the tabs over. And I'm gonna do my best to align the Ford logo with the valve stem on each of the wheels. Holds it down good. These tabs are soft enough that I can get them bent a little bit just by hand. Now I'll tap them down with the hammer and a tool here. I think I'll use a screwdriver. good let's see how that turned out nice and tight a little bit out of alignment with the stem but I'd say it's good enough now the second wheel get the hubcap prepped here about 90 degrees every other one Do it. Get that hubcap in place. Looks good. I'm gonna bend back these tabs as best I can, just with pressure and screwdriver. They got a little fold over at the tip, which is very helpful in tapping them down from this angle. That should do it. Mount that front wheel and line it up so I don't scratch things. Put on these new lug nuts, stainless steel. I don't need those little beveled washers because these are brand new wheels. These spokes are getting in the way for easy threading of the lug nuts. So I'm gonna insert it into this 13th, 16th socket and see if I can spin them on easier. Last thing I wanna do is cross thread them. Yep, that made a big difference. And this extension I got just so I would not be scratching up beating on this new powder coating. get by hand. When I searched online for torque specs for the Model A lug nuts, I found uh, some difference in opinion. Anywhere from 65 to 100 foot-pounds. But it seems like most folks say 65 foot-pounds is more than enough. While it's still in the jack stands, I'm going to tighten these lug nuts down best I can. Then I'll drop it on the floor and crank into it. Now, moving on to the rear wheel. It's 
This one's uh, not a happy stem here. The threads on this stud seem to be a little flattened. I'm having trouble getting the lug nut on. Let's try this old lug nut and see if it goes on. No problem. Maybe it was the new lug. All right, I got a different one. Let's try this new lug. Now, hangs up. I cleaned the setup with a little WD-40 on a cloth and that seems to have loosened it up. I feel no resistance now, thank goodness. All right, ready to take it off the floor stand. Going down. Two stands. Let's put her down. All right. We're done. One lesson I learned after ordering these inner tubes online from Coker, they do not include a washer and a nut to secure the valve stem to the rim. So I have since ordered them and I will put them on once received. I'm gonna tighten down these lug nuts using this extension bar. I'm not gonna put all my strength into it, but I need to put enough to make sure I'm close to 65 foot pounds. Good enough for now. All finished. Five new tires, two shiny new wheels, new hubcaps, new lug nuts. It looks great, it's safe, and ready to roll. Thank you for watching my video.